The Gen Z dating experience. Dating as a Gen Z adult. Guys, this video uh, has been been constantly recommended to me. Like every time I finish a video, be watching my bed, this video pops up and I've been saving it because I wanted to watch it with you guys. This looks really cool. It looks very interesting. Uh, it's by this guy named Suburban Will. I've actually seen his stuff before. Here he is. I've seen his stuff before. It's really good. So let's check it out. Life is like a race, except you're the only one running it. But at the same time, you can see everyone else running theirs. I'm in my uh -huh. 20s now, and I think it's probably the most awkward time in anyone's life. On one hand, there's people around my age who were steadily working their careers, climbing the corporate ladder, going out on the weekends, and living the typical adult life. And on the other, there's still a lot of us trying to figure it out. But I think out of all the good things you can have in life, the one thing most of us want more than anything is someone to do it with. When I look around, right. I see a lot of my yes. friends in long term. We all need waifus. Yes. We the the end go the end game goal is waifus. Yes. <laughs> I like I like how it's a uh, what? Charlie Brown and the Demon Slayer girl. Nice. Relationships and some of them have even gotten married. But I also have a lot of friends who are my age and have never even been in a relationship. Dating as a young adult is an interesting experience because dating comes with a lot of expectations. What do guys expect out of girls? What do girls expect from a guy? What does one partner expect from the other? There's this constant push and pull between what people want from each other romantically, and social media is only making it worse. It's why I think a lot of younger people think that romance is dead. Because social media is full of unrealistic expectations that I don't think 90% of young adults can meet. Yeah, I think he's got a good point there because social media has pretty much ruined us <laughs> as a, a dating, you know, society. You know, we have Tinder and Bumble now. Um, Bumble is like, like I guess, better, more official, more uh, for more serious relationships over Tinder. But yeah, like having the social media where you just literally judge, like swiping, you just swipe, 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 like, like I don't know how it is for girls, but oh no, I do know how it is for girls, maybe. I might be a little pretentious here, but for, for guys, yes, we men. I've been there. I've been. I've been there before. The Tinder, where you just swipe constantly every day. You just swipe, swipe, swipe. You run out of swipes, and then you go to bed. You wake up the next day. Swipe, 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 and you pray for a match. Yes, that is the the male experience in a in, in a nutshell with Tinder. Bro, in cavemen, in cavemen times, men used to see baddies like once in their lifetime. Now, now we see them every second. Our neurons are cooked. Yes, you are completely correct in your uh, assumption. Yes, we basically have. It's, it's that meme with the uh, with the monkey, the monkey with the neuron firing in the monkey's brain. We're all we're just monkeys. We're just okay. So we're just basically really evolved, highly intelligent monkeys. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Yo, bro, what's your type? Hmm. Well, I like short girls, but I go to the gym, so I also want her to be fit, too. And I kind of like when girls have a bit of an attitude, but I think confidence is hot, so I want her to have a lot of pride as well. Okay, so you said short, fit, has an attitude, and a strong sense of pride. Yeah, bro, I don't think you want a girlfriend. I think you want Vegeta. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, correct. <laughs> this oh get on block origin. How how you oh YouTube ads? Yeah, I had that. You know they 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 cracked down on ad blockers and stuff. So I didn't. I don't know about that thing. Though. I'll have to look it up. Um, yeah, secret. <laughs> Dude, Vegeta busting it. Dude, yeah, exactly. We just we just want Vegeta. That's all we want. We don't we don't want a woman. We want Vegeta. Yes, perfect. The perfect waifu is Vegeta. Vegeta's Vegeta, uh, Vegeta waifu. Now I'm not blaming social media for being the reason people are single, but I think sometimes people forget that social media is just a caricature of reality, and that most things shouldn't be taken so seriously. Every other day on Twitter, I see people getting worked up over hypothetical situations that would never happen. In would you let your girl do OnlyFans? Man, the OnlyFans is crazy now. Like, 
Like I see like the girls on there be like making like 50 million dollars a month. It's insane. I don't know. Like the top grossing OnlyFans model, I believe was like it was like something crazy. It was like 50 million a month. Like, can you imagine that amount of money per month? It's insane. I can't. <laughs> 50 million. I can't even imagine like a hundred bucks, dude. The heck? But I don't know. Would you let your girl do OnlyFans? I mean, if they're raking in the money, I don't know. It depends. It's on. I don't know. It's, it's up to you, I guess. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat. In reality, but they build their entire perspective on relationships around it. Babe, would you love me if I was a worm? What? If I got magically transformed into a worm, but I was still your girlfriend, would you still love me? I mean, how yes, the answer to this question is always yes, boys. Bro got Charlie Brown and <laughs> Lamal. Yes. The answer to the question, if a girl asked you, if I was if I was something, would you still love me? The answer is always should be yes. Don't say anything else. How could you be my girlfriend if you were a worm? That's wow. a wrong answer. Just wow. What kind <laughs> of question is this? Why would you even be a worm? This is why men deserve less. How am I supposed to date a worm? The truth is that there are men are very logical. We think very logically. So if if you say to us that you ask us if I was a worm, would you still love me? We will literally take that into consideration and be like why would you why would i i mean i can't marry a worm obviously not a lot of really cool people out there that are looking for someone compatible to spend their time with but a lot of the time we only get to see the negatives and then they and gossip like that <laughs> this causes us to shut ourselves down before we even give someone else the chance to possibly say yes believe it or not i've had girls that were interested in me tell me they were afraid to approach me because they didn't think they were my type but the truth is I don't have a type. Superficial things like someone's height, weight, income, or other things are temporary. And if you base your relationship with someone on those things, then the relationship will also be temporary. I'm not saying you should treat relationships like the stock market and invest in someone you don't find attractive, hoping they glow up into a supermodel. <laughs> I just think that a lot of times when you talk to people, most of them don't care that much about looks. Sure, there are shallow people out there, but not everybody. Let's just, um, yes, obviously, it's all about the personality. But a fat person or like an ugly person is going to have a lot harder time. It's just the reality. Okay, let's just be, let's be real here, guys. If you have a big forehead like me, it's very difficult. <laughs> Body is going to like you. And it's not always about your looks. It's like your boy coming to you like, it's no use trying to date, bro. Girls don't like me because I'm not six feet. No, bro, don't say that. It's not because you're not six feet. It's because you have no swag. Dating is <laughs> about finding someone who aligns with your values, priorities, and lifestyle. Yep. It won't always be a perfect fit, but you shouldn't have to put yourself in an uncomfortable position to meet someone else's expectations. A big fear when it comes to dating is the idea. Wait, let me hear that again. It won't always be a perfect fit, but you shouldn't yeah. have to put yourself in an uncomfortable position to meet someone else's expectations. Yeah, man, just be you. You don't have to try to be somebody else to appease another person. Yeah, you don't have to do that. Don't do that. Screw them. Fuck them. <laughs> Fuck them. Uh... A big fear when it comes to dating is the idea of being chosen versus... Sorry to pause so much, but yes, there is also a thing where like, there's like, people believe in soulmates too, but... It's good to have like a mix of things that you have in common with your partner and then things that you don't have in common because then you can, you know, introduce them to that stuff. But it's good to have a mix. I mean, there's not going to be a perfect person with that likes everything that you like, that does everything that you do. And there's not it's not there's no reciproc there's not going to be something reciprocal for that as well. It's just it's just the reality of the situation. It's being an option. When you're searching for someone to love, you want them to love you back equally. No one likes right. to think that their partner settled for them. You want to feel like you were their first option, not the backup plan. And this doesn't mean that you should only be looking for people who've never been in a relationship. That's unrealistic. It means that everyone deserves to feel like their partner chose them, that they're with you because they want to be. 
not because things didn't work out with the people they wanted more or that they're only with you because they couldn't get anybody else. I think in an era of social media, it's easy to compare yourself against other people, especially mm. when you're aware that your partner was with people before you. You are your own worst enemy. Everybody compares themselves to somebody else. It's just, it's just something we do naturally. So yeah, and it's very hard to resist doing that, comparing yourself to others, but it's a really good idea not to, because it, it only leads to you know, you being sad and depressed in the end. Like if the girl you like says she likes tall guys, but you're five, seven, or are your boyfriend's exes are blonde and you have dark hair. These things can make you feel insecure and that your partner yep. set up for you because you aren't their type. So when it comes to dating, it's really important that your partner knows that you chose them and not that they just happened to be your best option at the time. I think for a yeah. lot of young people, the scariest part of dating is dealing with commitment. A lot of people have different ways they become attached to others. Some people are more readily able to commit to someone and others are a bit more avoidant. Me personally, True. I'm very quick to accept people into my life and there are a lot of people I consider my friends. Pretty much, if you've ever just listened to me talk for more than 20 minutes, then I'll probably think of you as a friend. And this translates hmm. to my relationships because every time I meet a girl who's like, hey, you're kind of cute, we should hang out more. And I'm like, oh, bet, here's my number. But in my head, I'm already thinking about what we're gonna name our kids. <laughs> Dude, my that is so said, true. <laughs> every, every guy thinks that they're like as soon as like the girl comes up to you and is like hey, what's up and, he's, and you just look like um what's what, yeah what's gonna be the baby's name that's the first thing we think i get attached too quickly and they're honestly probably right i've dealt with girls who are more avoidant in the past and uh it's not for the weak but sometimes people have a fear of commitment for different reasons and that can make dating hard and depending on what it is, sometimes you have to let that stuff go. Everyone has that one friend that's still holding on to baggage from a long time ago. Yo, bro, I met this girl today and I think she'd be perfect for you. Nah, bro, I'm never dating again. All girls are the same. Bro, are you good? What's wrong? <laughs> Intel? Yeah, bro, it's just, <laughs> I still have some trauma I'm dealing with from my last relationship. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, bro. What happened? I got cheated on. Oh, that's tough. Bro. Nah, that's tough. To find out. I went to lunch early that day and I caught her in the act. No way. Yeah. She shared her chocolate milk with another guy at the lunch table. <laughs> Wait, what? She told me I was the only guy she would share her true mood with. I couldn't believe it. Wait, bro. How long ago was this? You remember Shanice? Bro, from seventh grade? Yes, Dude. bro. We were going to spend the rest of our lives together. Bro, that was middle school. You got to let that go. But I remember it like it was yesterday. Bro, we were 12. I can understand not one. Bro, I've been holding grudges since middle school. <laughs> yeah, that girl didn't share a truck or that girl shared a truck of milk with some other dude. How could she? <laughs> Rushing to a committed relationship with someone and wanting to take things slow. However, one thing that's super common with Gen Z is being caught in a situationship. Ooh. A situationship is basically when you're doing all the things that people in a relationship would do without being in a relationship. Sometimes people aren't on the same page when it comes to commitment and that's fine. One person may wanna take the relationship to the next level while the other person needs some time to know if they're ready. However, you shouldn't still be acting like you're in a relationship when you're not because that's when things get confusing. Yo, so how's things going with you and that one girl? Ah oh, man, they're great. We talk every day, we hang out all the time. I met her mom, she's been staying over. We're even <laughs> sleeping in the same bed. Oh, so like, is she your girlfriend now? Whoa, whoa. Why are you throwing that G word out, man? We're just friends. Well, we've been friends for years and we never sleep in the same bed. Except that one time. Well, I mean, it's different because she's a girl, you know? But we're just chilling. Okay, so if you're just friends, then you wouldn't be mad if I tried to ask her out. I will choke slam you through the floor, bro. <laughs> exactly. True. Bro. You clearly like her, so just wife her up. Is he talking about that one girl he's been kicking it with, but he's too scared to put a label on it? Yes, bro. Bro, if you don't man up and tell that girl you need her same day delivery like Amazon Prime. All right, bro, chill. I get not wanting to put a label on things, but what's important is that you're both on the same page. One time I went to get lunch with a female friend of mine and everything was going great until the waitress brought the check. Apparently, uh -oh. since she saw a guy and a girl getting food together, she immediately assumed that we were on a date. And since it's a date, I'm supposed to pay for both of our meals. And that was crazy. Because before bringing the check, waiters usually ask if your meals are separate. But no, she was just like, this is a date. Okay, so like if it was me, I would always, 
I would always personally, I would always pay first. I would, or sorry, I would pay on the first date always. That's just what I do. But then like after that, like we do some more dates and stuff. Maybe we take turns or whatever. But uh, usually like if you're in a relationship, like in, in my experience, like we would just split the bill basically. And there's usually no problem. I don't think, I don't think there's a problem with splitting bills, you know, in my opinion. But like the first date, yeah. I don't know where that's, that stigma came from where the guy has to pay for the meal. Like always. Nah, 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 nah. First date only. First date only. You're a man, so you pay. My friend offered to cover her half, but at that point, I had already accepted my fate. So yeah, make sure it's clear where you stand with someone before you end up spending $53 on a burger and fries. Ooh. One unique Dude, I went to I went to New York, right? And like I live in Japan and get paid in yen, right? So it's like super weak compared to the dollar. So I go to New York like on vacation when I went to visit my family in America. And the freaking hamburger without fries and without a drink was 20 freaking dollars before tax. 20 bucks, 20 smackaroonies for a fucking hamburger. It wasn't even that good too. And uh, yeah, the exchange rate was terrible. I ended up basically, if you and I were to go to New York together and eat that same burger, you would pay, and you're American, you would pay 50, or $20 for that hamburger. On the other side, I would be paying like $35. That's how much it would cost me in reality. It's insane, dude. The big thing about dating for Gen Z though, is that we have a lot of options when it comes to looking for love. Obviously, there's traditional dating where you meet someone either on your own or through your friends and you start talking and then eventually start dating. But there's also online dating. It's really freaking hard to do traditional dating nowadays, I think, because like nobody just goes to bars and like, you know, you always see it in the, the movies where the guy like walks up to the girl in the bar and say, hey, what's going on? <laughs> got to get that riz on right but yeah i don't it's like really difficult to to traditionally date nowadays because everybody's just online all the time nobody goes out nobody goes to bars and yeah just nobody nobody socializes really or at least from what i've seen you know so it's really difficult to date traditionally in my opinion i think online dating is just a lot easier dating where you create your profile, get a match, and hope that yep. the stranger you meet is normal enough to not make you want to block them on everything the second the date is over. And there's also e-dating, which is cringe. E -dating. Traditional dating may seem less common among Gen Z with how prevalent dating apps are, but yep. a lot of relationships still start this way, especially if you're still in school where you're regularly surrounded by people around your age. There are a lot of obstacles that get in the way of traditional dating though. Like having enough free time to go out and meet people yep. or having enough personal connections to find an available partner or even just having enough money to keep going on dates. Yeah, true. Right. Because like especially with the time thing, like if I like for me, I like work a lot. Right. So in Japan, this is crazy. But like you work like like start work at nine or something and then um, you basically end at 9 p.m. in Japan and then you got to go home on the train which takes like an hour or something it takes an hour to get there so you, it's like 8 a, it's like 8 a.m to 10 p.m basically if you go to the office that day a lot of people work from home but if you're going to the office it's going to be a 12 hour day like no like for sure 12 12 hours so you have like no fucking time to do anything like you get home and it's like uh well okay it's 10 p.m what am i supposed to do now i gotta get up early so i can't even eat dinner i can't even make dinner so i gotta buy something buy some crap food or whatever and so yeah how do you have any time to socialize and this goes to similar similar for america right nine to five job but it's always longer than that right and then you have the commute times which takes a long time especially if you're stuck in traffic like america doesn't have trains like japan does America is a car culture. I know that very well because I hated it. I fucking hate cars. They're just money suckers. So it's just, you have no time to date, guys. It's crazy. No money, but too. But the biggest hurdle by far is dealing with rejection. Oh, dude, no yeah. No is one of the hardest words to hear. Building up the courage to approach someone is hard enough as it is. And for it to not go your way really stinks. People walk around every day. I had, I had a, uh, I had a girl that was like, it said no and then she said yes and then she said no again like she changed her mind 
Like, what the fuck? Playing with my emotions. Ridiculous. Make up your damn mind. It's terrible. Yeah. Rejection sucks, bro. It with countless insecurities living in the back of their head. So no matter who you are, being rejected can make you feel like you're just not good enough. And that's fair. You've probably heard it before. The worst she can say is no. And yeah, no, no the worst is the worst not she can say she no. Can say. Yep. You could walk up to a girl and ask her out and she could look at you and say, Ew, I would never go out with an ugly, stinky, bald-headed, swagless nerd like you. <laughs> Charlie Brown. My standards aren't that low. And honestly, at that point, you're cooked. But that's only the worst case scenario. Most of the time, rejection usually goes like this. Hey, uh, I saw you across the way there and I thought you were really pretty. I was wondering if you'd like to go out sometime. Oh, that's really sweet. Thank you. But I'm not really looking for anything at the moment. Mm. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, no worries. Have a nice day. No matter how nice it is, rejection always hurts. And for most yep. guys, at least, I don't even think it's a fear of rejection, but rather a fear of being seen as a creep. And I completely understand. Exactly. The thought of making a woman uncomfortable is almost unbearable. But you can like you'd be walking, just walking down the street, and if you're behind a woman, you'd be like a, you'd be seen as some kind of stalker, even though you're just trying to, <laughs> trying to go home or something. It's crazy. Can't let your fear of rejection turn into a fear of approaching people in general. All right, bro, I'm finally gonna do it. Today, I'm gonna tell that girl how I really feel. Bet, bro, you're in there. I'm telling you, just play it cool. You're right, bro. I just gotta stay confident. Excuse me. Do you know what time the library closes? I need to return this book, but I'm trying to figure out if I should do it before or after my next class. Could you help me out here? Um, he, uh, had to go to the bathroom. Despite the challenges, <laughs> I still think dating traditionally is one of the best ways to meet someone. It your friends can help is. put you on with people they think will match your personality, and it gives you a more organic connection with someone that can grow over time. Online dating isn't really a new thing anymore, and honestly, it isn't as bad as it used to be. I have a few friends who met their partners on dating apps, and they're honestly in very happy, healthy relationships with people they met online. Yeah, I think the biggest yeah. issue with online dating, though, is that since you're dealing with strangers, it can be very superficial. The only thing they really have to go off of initially is your appearance and whatever you put on your profile. So sometimes it's hard to really find someone who's a good match for you. It also goes yeah. against the number one rule of the internet, which is to never link up with random people you met online. But it does lead to one of my favorite <laughs> games, which is figuring out how long it takes for your date to finally reveal themselves as a weirdo. Wow, this was such a nice date. I really enjoyed talking to you. Of course, you're such an interesting person. Can I ask you something before we leave? Sure, what's up? Can I take a picture of your feet? Your toes look uh, very nice, and I would dude. love to set them as the wallpaper on my phone. Wh what? Can you imagine? <laughs> like, imagine if you're like a girl on a date with a guy that you met on Tinder. And then at the, like, it's so, it goes so well, right? And then at the end of the date, like, it's almost perfect. And then he's just like, he asks you, can I take a picture of your feet? <laughs> what the? Dude, that is so, it happens too. It actually happens. But all like jokes aside though, right? Online, I have a friend that was like, that found a, uh, basically he's married now, but he found his girlfriend on Bumble and they dated and then they got married. Perfect. I mean, it, it works for a lot of people. I, I thought you said you like girls with a good soul. No, no, no. I said I like girls with good souls. Oh, here, geez. hold still for a second. Um, I think my Uber's here. And then there's e-dating. Oh, What's e-dating? Is the that digital age has changed the way we do a lot of things, including dating. And e-dating is something that's really common among people who don't go outside a lot. And don't get me wrong, I've been playing video games since I was four. And over the years, I've met a lot of really cool people online and would even consider them good friends. I think just about everyone mm -hmm. in Gen Z has at least one friend that they've never actually met in person. E-dating isn't too different from your typical long distance relationship, but it's definitely a relatively new experience. Dude, from experience, long distance relationships do never, they never work. It's, it's just, it's very sad, but, and if it's, if it's unavoidable, it's really sad, but they just don't work. They just, it's very difficult to keep the relationship going, especially when you're like 6,000 miles away or something. Not just like, oh, it's, it's, they're in the next state over. No, it's like a different country. If it's a different country, it's almost impossible.
One day, you and your homie are queuing Swift plays and an e-girl with a soft voice gets on your team. Now you see him duo queuing on his alt and silver at 4 a.m. I know I make fun of e-dating a lot, but genuinely, if you're happy with someone you met in a Discord server, then that's great. But I've also seen a lot of e-relationships in badly with leaked DMs full of messages I wish Ooh. I never saw. So if you're gonna e-date, make sure- Yeah, this is why you never, you never send nudes never ever you never send like the personal info unless you're like with that person okay for sure it's a bad idea to send anything out there because once it's out there on the internet it never goes away never does sure she's only for you and not for the hashtag general no matter what kind of situation you find yourself in it's important that you always remember to be yourself be yourself you don't need yes to be someone else to attract a certain type of person and if you feel the need to act like someone you're not to impress someone, then they're probably not worth it. There are people out there who will like you for you. You don't have to pretend. So just stick to being yourself. We all know that one guy that starts acting different when girls come around. Bro, oh, there's no way he's beating Goku. Nobody can beat Goku. Dude, I'm telling you, with Gear 5, Luffy solos the verse. Bro, he's not touching Goku. You're tweaking. Dude, there's no fucking way Luffy, Gear, even Gear 5 would be able to take on Goku. There's just no way. Bro, the Toon Force, I'm telling you the Nah, bro, I'm not trying to hear it, bro. He's not touching Goku. Hey, guys. Oh, hey, what's up? What you guys doing? Oh, we were just having an anime debate. Like, this guy thinks Luffy can be... I mean, that was really more so him. Like, I'm really into all that anime. True, dude, real, 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 real. Yeah, I'll be talking to my friend, like, dude, did you see what happened in One Piece in the latest episode? And he's like, yeah, dude, that's so cool, dude. And then the girl comes by, like a hot girl. And then... As soon the friend betrays you immediately it's happened before stuff for real it's like kind of immature for me oh you guys talking about anime i love anime have you guys seen hunter hunter, Ooh, uh, hunter, hunter? plot yeah, twist my show like killer will like that's my favorite character bro weren't you just calling it mid like last week bro chill you always bringing up old stuff like I'm hunter hunter is not that. mid hunter hunter is amazing go watch it go read it it's new stuff's out right now uh, right um Anyway, I was coming over to ask if you still needed your shift covered tomorrow. My schedule opened up and I wanted some extra hours. Oh yeah, it's perfect. I really need it to be off tomorrow. So if you can, that'd be great. Yeah, bro. Now you can come to the gym. Like, I'd be going every day. In fact, probably about to go now, low key. <laughs> probably hit the bench. Um, yeah, so I'll text you when I pick your shift up, okay? Yeah, thank you. I mean, you can text me too, though. Oh. To sum it up, Relationships are complicated, and a lot of times, yes, finding they the are. person who's right for you takes a lot of trial and error. Some people get lucky and are able to find the right person for them at a young age. And for others, it takes a while. What matters is that you remember to prioritize yourself just as much as you value the relationship. You shouldn't lose yourself just to be with someone else, so make sure you take time to focus on you as well. Don't become one of those people who spends every second of their life with their significant other and invest in a support system outside of your partner too. When it comes to relationships, yeah, get it can a be easy to turn a good thing into a bad thing. And the key to making sure things don't go south is finding balance. Don't hang on to something bad for too long, but also don't be quick to let a good thing go just because you hit a bump in the road. Like all things, a healthy relationship takes patience, compromise, and maturity. Thanks for watching the video. That was don't a good video. Follow me on Twitter. Oops. And thanks for 20k. Peace. 20k subscribers. Awesome. Yeah, dude. So, wow, that was a really good video. Um Yeah. Online dating is like has a really bad image in the in the world, but it actually can be really like I mentioned before with my friend, it could be very good for finding a relationship, especially in the ever since, you know, the virus everybody's been inside really nobody really goes outside anymore especially with social media and tiktok and youtube and twitter instagram everything so yeah it's it traditional dating just really is very rare like i don't think if you go to a bar in the city i don't think you're going to see many 20 year olds there unless you go to like some kind of nightclub or i i dude i hate nightclubs but yeah, I mean, people. Some t also, some people find their their significant other like really early and like high school sweethearts, high school, and then they're there for life. Some people never find anybody and are alone for the rest of their life. There's it just happens. It's it's, re it's a reality. And some people just take take a while, like they'll be they'll just find the person mid you know midway, and that's good. Every any way is fine.
Anyway, really banger video, guys. This is Gen the Gen Z Dating Experience by Suburban Will. Make sure to check them out. Go subscribe. That was a really good video. Like the video. Oh.